If you would like to learn what is a WordPress functionality plugin, why and when you might want to use it, and also how to create one, then this video is for you. Hi, my name is Anja and my goal here is to help you build awesome websites. In this video, I would like to talk to you about WordPress functionality plugins. So whenever you're trying to add some functionality to your WordPress website, uh, usually it's just a matter of finding a plugin in the repository, installing and activating it. But there are some custom functionalities that's either too basic or too customized for there to be a plugin for it. And that's when the functions PHP file comes in. So you might be following a tutorial that guides you to put the PHP snippet uh, inside the functions PHP file. And usually the same exact code will work uh, if uh, placed inside a, mm, a plugin. So the functionality plugin is basically a place for you to put your uh, PHP code snippets. And the difference between the functionality plugin and the standard WordPress plugin is that it's specific to your website. It would not be publicly available to download. It wouldn't also include a settings page because it just uh, holds your own uh, code. You can structure it uh, so it's easier to manage. And also you can reuse the same bits of functionalities on different websites more easily. So why wouldn't you want to use the functions PHP file instead? Well, first of all, if you decide to switch themes in the future, your code won't work anymore. So you should keep the site specific code separate from the theme. And uh, with the DV theme, we have a lot of premium child themes. So placing your functions PHP inside a child theme uh, will work fine and will keep your code safe from updating DV theme. But if you're uh, using a premium child theme that comes with uh, its own update, uh, automatic update process, then editing that file uh, may be overwritten with the child theme update. So to keep your code safe, you might want to move it to a functionality plugin. So I hope this makes sense. And now let me show you how to create this plugin step by step. So here I am in the WordPress dashboard on the plugins page. As you can see, I don't have any plugins currently installed. This is my uh, demo website. And what I'm going to do is I will open up my code editor. I'm using Coda, but any code editor uh, you use any form of FTP connection will work here. So I'm already connected uh, through FTP uh, with my website. As you can see, I'm inside the plugins uh, folder in the WP content directory. So here, all I need to do is simply create a new folder. And let's call it my website functionality. And inside that folder, let's create a new file. PHP file. It doesn't really matter how you name it. It's a good practice probably to keep the name similar to the folder name and avoid using uh, numbers and special character, uh, characters, but this uh, will work fine. So here inside the PHP file, all we need is the opening tag. And then below that, we simply need a plugin name. my website plugin and let's save that and now if I refresh the page you can see my plugin already here I can activate it it obviously won't do anything yet but let's activate it 
and it works. We only included a plugin name, but there is more information we can uh, put in the plugin header. So let me copy this here real quick. And if I, instead of this, let's paste that. And as you can see, we have plugin name, description, version, author, author URL, and uh, license information. So if I save that and refresh my uh, plugins page, you see all this information uh, here in the plugin description. Okay, and uh, a note here, you don't need to work um, directly on the server. You can create this file uh, on your computer. So uh, if I would create a folder on my uh, computer and name it the same, uh, use the text editor to insert my code and name the file with the PHP extension, then I could simply uh, zip it uh, using the uh, compress functionality. I'm sure it's similar in, on Windows computers. And now with the zip file, I could simply add it in the uh, dashboard by uploading the zip file. And later you could use the plugin editor in the dashboard and uh, edit, uh, add your code snippets through here. But anytime we would like to insert a new file, for example, then you would need to recreate the zip file again. So working uh, directly on the server is more convenient. And that's it. Really, you can include any snippets you would normally put in the functions PHP file just below uh, in that file and it will work uh, the same. So let's maybe add a sample function so we can test it out. Let's start with the comment. So it's um, call to action fixed button. And I will create a function that will display a link that I want to be a fixed link inside my footer to show up on every page. And we'll use some CSS to style it and maybe add uh, some JavaScript just to show you <laughs> how to do it. So first let's uh, make the uh, link appear. We need a function and we need to hook this function into an action hook. We'll hook it to the WP footer and we need our function name. Okay, so this function is empty. Let's just to test this, let's do the echo. Let's save that. And this is my demo page. If I refresh it down below in the footer, there's my hello right here. So that's great. Let's go back here and instead of and that let me show you how you can insert HTML. So to mix HTML and PHP, all you need to do is close the PHP tag and now we can write HTML. So to include a link, it would be a href something with a class of DL um, fixed button. And let's say, let's make it say click me. Okay. And now we need to open the PHP again. Let's save that. See how it works. Okay, we have our link here. So now let's um, include CSS. Okay, so back here uh, in my plugin um, folder, let's cre create a new folder for our assets. You can make any folder structure you like, anything that makes sense for you and helps you keep things organized. So here, a new file, style CSS. And now in the um, main 
plugin 5 we need to uh, load and queue our CSS. So new function. And I copied this from uh, WordPress Codex. So this would be a name. It could be our functionality styles. And this would be assets in our game. Sorry, assets. Okay, and now we need to hook this to um, WP and Q. So add action WP and DL and <laughs> Okay. In our style sheet, let's save that. And here, let's add some CSS code. So it's see if it uh, works. DL, DL fixed button. Let's say display nine lock background. Let's pick a nice background color. Okay, color white padding 10 pixels from the top and bottom and 15 left and right font size 12 pixels font height bold and position fixed Z index and it would be fixed at the bottom. So bottom 10 pixels and left 10 pixels and text decoration none. Uh, sorry, text decoration none. Okay, let's save that and see if we refresh the page. There is my button, and as you can see, it is fixed, or even when I scroll down. Maybe we could uh, decrease the padding, but it doesn't really matter. It's just to show you that it actually works. And if I uh, view my page source, you'll see that my functionality styles are being loaded here, right? So back here, this uh, function works. And now we can use the same function to also include JavaScript. We'll use WP and Q to insert our script and not the style. So it's quite similar. It's And if we want to use jQuery, we need to make sure it loads after the default jQuery script is uh, being loaded by WordPress. So, all right. Like this, let me make it smaller so it's easier to read. Okay. That's a good start, but now we need this file, the script, scripts, C, uh, js file inside our assets folder. So here, new file. Okay, 
And here let's include a simple jQuery uh, function. Let's say our DL fixed button once clicked. So let's say it works. Save that, refresh the page here. And now if I click, it works lovely. So hopefully that uh, helps you. One more thing I would like to show you is that you can actually organize it a bit better. So instead of um, pasting your snippets one below another and, and so on, uh, you can actually include a separate files. So for example, let's uh, create a new file called um, call to action text button PHP and move this to, to that file. So I will cut it from here and here. PHP opening tag and then this the same function. I'll save that and here I can simply include this other file. So include um, like so. Save that and it should still work if we refresh the page. Yeah, the button is still here. So this way you can create separate files for uh, separate functionalities. So I hope it's helpful. You can download the same exact plugin I made uh, from my uh, blog post and hopefully that will give you a nice starting point to building your own functionality plugin. So I hope I explained it well and it was helpful. Please let me know in the comments and I'll see you next time.